Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So this is Biology Paper 2 and if you are new to this channel, subscribe for more videos like this. So the first question is saying figure 1.1 shows a cell from an organism. So we have a cell which is this one here. Then the first question which is Roman number 1 is saying in which type of living organism are cells similar to the one shown in figure 1.1 normally found? So if uh, you look clearly at this figure 1.1, you're going to see that it has the structures similar to that of a plant cell because an animal cell looks like this one here. So this one is a rough sketch of an animal cell. So this is how an animal cell looks like. Now, for question A, Roman number number 1, the answer is uh, plant cells or plant cell. Then as for Roman number number 2, it is saying, state two reasons for your choice of living organism in Roman number number 1. So if you compare the structures or the shape of an animal cell, which is this one here, to that of a plant cell. You are going to find that a plant cell has a fixed shape and an animal cell has an irregular shape. So the reason why we are saying that this one here it is a plant cell, this is because it has a fixed shape. So that's the first reason, because of the fixed shape. Then the next one, um, these structures here, they are called cytoplasms or cytoplasm. Then this part here, it is called the nucleus. So it is called the nucleus. Now, as you can see, the nucleus here, it is located at the center. But as for this one here, this part here is called the nucleus. Okay. So what is on the center here, it is called the vacuum. The vacuum in a plant cell, it is located at the center. But when you talk of an animal cell, the vacuum it is not located at the center. It is the nucleus which is located at the center. So another reason here, I'm just going to say, because of the central vacuum. So this part here. It is located at the center. That's what I'm saying because of the central vacuum. An animal cell doesn't have a central vacuum. The next one. Figure 1.2, which is A, shows the same cell after it had been placed in solution A for 10 minutes. The cell was then transferred to solution B and figure 1.2, which is B, shows how it appeared after a further 10 minutes. So we have this part, we have this cell here, and also this cell here. If you see clearly, you are going to find that they are having different uh, shapes, okay, or their appearance are different. Yes. So for question B, it is saying, explain what has occurred to cause the cell to appear as it does in figure 1.2, which is A. So we need to explain. Now before we explain, we need to look at how structure of figure 1.2, which is A, is appearing. So this one here has gained water. Okay, this one here has gained water because it has increased in size compared to the original one. So the original one is looking like this one here. But if you see this one here, it has gained water. So this cell was placed in hypotonic solution because osmosis is defined as the movement of water molecules from the region of lower concentration 
to the region of our concentration across the semi-permeable membrane. So this cell here was placed in hypotonic solution because hypotonic solution, it is the solution whose concentration is lower to that of inside a living cell, right? So the water are going to enter the cell by osmosis. So to explain what has occurred here, we are just going to say, uh, the cell was pressed in hypotonic solution and the concentration gradient occurred. So once you place the cell in any solution, you are going to find that the concentration gradient is going to occur unless if the cell is placed in isotonic solution, where you are going to find that the solutions are going to be equal. But in this case, here, this one was placed in hypotonic solution. So the concentration gradient is going to occur or it is going to exist. So the next one is going to be water enters the cell across the cell membrane. Then apart from that one, the last one is going to be the cell gains water by osmosis and undergo turgidity. So when a plant cell, when a plant cell, not an animal cell, when a plant cell gains water by osmosis, it is going to undergo turgidity, right? A turgidity is more like the, 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 the shape which an, a plant cell is going to attain when it gains water without bursting, right? Because an, a plant cell doesn't burst, okay? Because of the cell wall. But an animal cell bursts because it doesn't have a cell wall, right? Then as for this one here, the cell in figure 1.2b, it was placed in hypertonic solution, not hypotonic, but hypertonic solution. Then let's come to C. C is saying compare, compared, compared with uh, the water potential of the cell. What could be deduced about solution A and B? Solution A was um, hypotonic. Then as for solution B was hypertonic. So the reason why I'm saying solution A was hypotonic, this is because the cell in figure 1.1, which is A, so when a cell is placed in hypotonic, it is going to gain water by osmosis. Specifically, if it is a plant, it is going to undergo turgidity. Then if it is an animal cell, it is going to undergo cell lysis. Right. Then as for question D, it is saying, what will be found in region C in figure 1.2, which is B, this one here, at the end of an experiment, you are going to find that at C, what is going to remain here, it is just air. That's so. That is air. So the answer here is going to be air. Explain your answer. So the answer here is just going to be because the cell membrane has been pulled out from the cell wall. Right? So this one is the cell membrane. This one here. It is the on out cell membrane here. The cell membrane has been put out from the cell wall. That's the answer. Because the cell membrane has been put out from the cell wall. The next one. So the next one is saying figure 3.1 shows the blood supply to cells in the liver. So this structure here is showing the cells in the liver. So now what should come in your mind when they're talking about the liver is that the metabolism of the liver. Because the liver plays many laws of metabolism. Right. So we have C or, or cell C and also cell D. So the first question, which is question A, Roman Yimenambani is saying, name the cells labeled C and D. So what kind of a cell is cell C? So cell C, it is called a red blood cell, right? It is a red blood cell. 
Why are we saying it is a red blood cell? Because of the biconcave in shape. So, because of the biconcave in shape. The shape here it is called biconcave in shape. And then, as for D, it is going to be the phagocyte or the white blood cell. So, the reason why we are saying D is the phagocyte, this is because of, um, this is because of who? the lobed nucleus. So, the part that I'm drawing here it is called D, the lobed nucleus. So, this is how a phagocyte looks like. And then, as for Roman email number two, he's saying the arrow in figure 3.1 shows the movement of substances from the liver cells into the capillary. Name three substances that move in the direction shown. So we have the liver cells here. We have the liver cells here. And the direction is pointing at, um, southwards. Now you're going to find that the liver plays main roles under metabolism. For example, so the first one, it deaminates excess amino acids into urea. So once urea is made in the liver, it is going to enter into the blood capillary. Right? So the first one here, the first substance is just going to be urea. Then apart from urea, glucose. When there is high um, blood sugar in your body, you're going to find that Glucose is going to be converted into glycogen. Now, suppose your body is lacking glucose, which means glycogen is going to be converted back into glucose, and it is going to enter the bloodstream. Substance 3, it is just going to be bow, right? So it is just going to be bow, yes. So bow is secreted in uh, this direction. So question B, Roman Miraman is saying, describe the effect of adrenaline on liver cells. So adrenaline is an example of a hormone which is uh, secreted by the adrenal gland. So the adrenal gland are located each above the kidney. So each above the kidney. Now, the other name for the adrenal line, it is called fight or flight hormone. So fight or flight hormone or adrenal line is secreted when you are excited or when you are emotional, you are in emotional stress or when you are angry, right? That is when the adrenal line is um, secreted. Now, the effect of the adrenal line on uh, liver cells is that when you are sick and you don't have much power to fight or flight the, the danger, you are going to find that once the adrenal lines are secreted by the adrenal gland, these are going to, these are going to speed up the rate of respiration, right? They are going to speed up the rate of respiration, thereby increasing the conversion of uh, glycogen into glucose so that glucose is used by the body cells. When you are scared, the adrenal line speeds up the rate of respiration, thereby increasing the conversion of glycogen into glucose so that it can be used by the body cells to generate energy. That's the answer. Then as for Roman human number two, it is saying, state a situation in which this might occur. So this one might occur when you are scared, right? When you, scared, when you are scared of something, when you are sick and you, you are scared of a snake, you are going to find that you are going to have power, no matter what, you are going to have power to fight or flight for that danger. That is what usually happens when adrenal lines are secreted. And also this one here, it also increases um, the breathing rate, but this one doesn't apply to the liver cells, okay? Yes. Then the next one is saying, which is C, sometimes 
the liver is unable to remove glucose from the, from the blood. This condition is called diabetes. Roman numeral number one, state two symptoms of this condition. So the first one is going to be the presence of glucose in the urine. So whenever you, you find that you are having glucose in the urine, which means you have diabetes, then apart from that one, the presence of glucose in the blood or excess, right? Excess content of glucose in the blood. You're going to find that you're going to have diabetes if you're having high content of blood sugar. So glucose is also known as the blood sugar. That's the other name or the common name for glucose. Then as for Roman number two, it is saying, state how this condition is treated. So this condition can be treated by inserting the insulin in your body. Because when you're having diabetes, which means the pancreas is unable to produce the insulin, right? When you're having diabetes, this is because of the pancreas being unable to produce the insulin. So once you have been in, uh, injected with insulin, the artificial insulin, you're going to find that that insulin is going to convert now excess glucose into glycogen, which is going to be stored in the liver cells and the muscle tissues. Then as for question uh, three, it's saying, a person visits an, um, a person visits an eye doctor to have an eye test. On the wall of the doctor's room is a diagram of an eye. So we have structure X and layer Y. Question A. Roman number one is saying, name the part labeled X. So part labeled X, it is called the lens. Part labeled X is called the lens. So the lens, that is when our daylight passes, passes through. That is when our daylight passes through and it, it is transparent, right? The lens is transparent, which means light can pass through. Then as for Roman number two, describe one way in which the structure of X is related to, it, to its function. So it is transparent. It is what? Transparent. This enables light to be reflected, right? It is transparent. This enables light to be reflected and pass through. Then as for Roman numeral number three, name layer Y. So layer Y, it is called the retina. This layer here, it is called the retina and it contains the sensitive cells which detect the light intensity. So that was the last one. If you are new to this channel, subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.